Hey everyone, recently I demonstrated how to create a three deep cascading combo box series on a form. That is, when you make a selection with the top combo box, it would restrict the results in the next combo box, and then clicking on a value from there would further restrict the final combo box. That way you would never have a mismatch between the three. In the example I used, I used state, city, and postal code, since that's a relationship that people understand. It was pointed out, though, that even though that was just meant to be a demonstration of this functionality, that when it comes to using addresses, you'd probably actually start with the postal code and you wouldn't use drop down boxes. You would just manually enter a value in the postal code and then city and state would auto populate without any additional entry. So I figured I'd show how to do that. The only thing is we can't do it with this current structure. And the main reason is because even though Postal code is unique and state is unique, city is not. For instance, one of the cities I used was Mansfield. Well, there's Mansfield, Mass, Mansfield, Texas, Mansfield, Ohio, Arkansas. So what happened is when you would enter a postal code here, using our current table structure, it would indeed find the corresponding city, but when the city then went up to the state uh, table, it would find multiple results and we don't want that we want to find the unique result so we can't use the current table structure but that's okay what we're going to do we're going to import a listing of postal codes cities and states i haven't checked but i'm pretty sure that either usps or ups maybe wikipedia there's got to be a listing of all postal codes somewhere it's not proprietary information in fact it's in the interest of all delivery companies to make sure people have good information so somewhere out there there's probably either a spreadsheet or a so-called flat file which is really just a text file in csv format so comma separated values you can find something if you take a look i'm just going to import one that i manually created but the functionality would be the same you'd go to external data you'd go to new data source you'd go from file choose whatever file type it is that you downloaded from where it is that you downloaded it mine happens to be excel i already navigated to the right location and it's this spreadsheet here all postals and we're going to choose the top choice where it gets imported into a new table in the current database. We click on next. Do we want the first row to be the column headings? Yes, we do. We want that to be the column headings and not just another record or row in the table. Now you have the ability to decide if you want to hide things or not, oh, excuse me, not hide them, to not import them, big difference. So they would not be imported into your table, into your database. So for instance, this has just state, city, postal code. Maybe there's additional information that you don't want. You would select that field and you would just say, do not import. Well, we do want to import all these. Second of all, notice the data type. So this is short text, this is short text, this is short text. Be careful, you really don't want this to be number because since some postal codes start with a zero, the zero might get dropped. Not to mention that it's considered best practice that if you're not going to use a number for the purposes of calculations, that it really shouldn't be a number. Like for instance, a phone number would not be stored as a number. A social security number would not be stored as a number. That you're probably gonna store those as text or some specialized data format. So we're going to keep these all as short text, and we are going to import them all. As far as primary key, we're going to choose the primary key, and we're going to make it be the postal code because that's what we're starting with, and that's usually that's really the unique identifier because there's only one postal code in the table. There are multiple cities, such as Mansfield, and there's multiple states. So this is the only one that's unique. So next, and then finish and then close and now we have our table and I added a few that we didn't have in the last one to indicate that there are multiple Mansfield okay so let's go ahead and close that and we'll create our new form so after you click on the create tab click on the blank forum button we're going to shut off the navigation controls as normal we're going to click on view, design view, 
on the design tab at the top click on the property sheet and again the property sheet is of the form as a whole that's what the dot means that the form itself is selected and then for the format tab we're going to set navigation buttons to no and record selectors to no it's really not pertinent to this particular demonstration, but it's always good to lock down your database and to make sure that your users cannot navigate the tables in a way that you did not design the database to handle. Now what we're going to do, we're going to designate a data source for this form. So again, with the form itself selected, you're going to click on the data tab and for record source, you're going to click on the drop down arrow and choose all postal so this table is now being used as a data source for this form that's going to allow us to have an option that we wouldn't normally have now i think i mentioned we weren't going to use any combo boxes we will use one but we're going to have it function like a text field it's just that by using a combo box in conjunction with having a data source we get an option that we wouldn't otherwise have available to us. So we're going to click on combo box, just left click, draw that. We're going to click on find a record on my form based on the value I selected in my combo box. You would not have that if you hadn't selected a data source for the form. Click on next, we're going to click on postal code, we're going to push that over because the postal code is what we're going to enter here. We're going to do next, next, finish and now what we're going to do also since we designated a data source what we're going to do is we can now add fields from this table so again on the design tab this time click on add existing fields you can now just left click bring in city left click bring in state and that is the bulk of the functionality and the reason why this works is because if you look at the properties of this combo box. If you click on the property sheet, what you'll see, in addition to here's the data, if you click on event, you'll see after update. If you view this, this is what's known as a macro. It's basically giving it some instructions. It's saying search for a record, the first record, and that this is the criteria. So if we click on view, and let's open up postal table and let's use say 02108 so 02108 so if we type in 02108 and then we click enter sure enough we get boston so even though it's a combo box you're typing it in you're still treating it as if it's a text box we just get the added benefit of that macro that's attached let's choose 72944. So 72944. And there's Mansfield, Arizona. Let's make sure that's the right one. So 72944. Sure enough, it brought up Arizona. It really shouldn't be an issue because since these are all in one table, you're saying here's the criteria and you're just saying grab these two. So it really shouldn't grab this one and then this one. But let's do 76063. 76063 in Texas. So it did indeed update to the Texas Mansfield city as opposed to the Arkansas. So now all that's left, and I really can't show it in this tutorial because it depends on what you're doing, you then would transfer these fields to whatever record you're creating. So whether it's an, uh, an order form that's being created these are just the lookups you would then transfer these over to another field like you're pulling them from this table but you're going to save them to another table is what i'm getting at so you're going to have either a transaction table or it's a human resource table whatever it is that you're trying to save it to so you're reading from one table and saving it to another. And I actually already have a video that demonstrates how to do that. So if you want, I can uh, put a link to that. If you have any questions, just let me know. But I believe that should handle the core functionality that the commenter made, and that is you manually enter a postal code and that it automatically brings up the corresponding city and state rather than drilling down, starting with state and then city and then postal code. 
So again, if you have any questions, feel free to put in the comment section. I hope you have uh, found this to be useful, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.